Great talent here. Thank you, Dawn. So today, the topic is heavenly peace. And I'm going to start with some words by our co-founder, Myrtle Fillmore. And it's from the book, How to Let God Help You. Unity of spirit conquers the world for the Lord. We are sending forth peace to every land. Nations will forget to fight if we continue to know that all people express the one life. No one will deny that God is omnipresent or that God is all. Yet we talk about a great many presences, a great many powers, and other things that do not belong to God. No one denies God. All persons seek after it when they know how. When do we find that there is only one presence, the real presence of infinite goodness, we find no place for the opposite quality? Heavenly peace is that which we give peace to. It's always in us. We are never separate from it. At times, we choose to live in the conflict of the outer world in disharmony. True peace is true harmony. And it's up to us to decide where we want to be in any moment. How do we do that? One of the ways is to remember that substance comes from within. Bethlehem is the manna from God. It's the substance of all life. So in the story, the Christmas story, when you hear the word Bethlehem, you're looking at that all presence life, the manna, the substance that is always us. That kind of scares people when I say we are God. God is us. We are not separate. We are one. We may look different, we may think different thoughts, but we are one presence in the universe, which is God, the good. The opposite comes in when we allow it to come in through our thinking, which in unity we call our era thoughts, or in traditional faith, it's evil. Right? So the duality, which in unity we don't believe in. There is no duality except for what we create in our own minds. There's no opposite if we choose not to have it. So in our daily practice on our spiritual journey, we may become challenged right right it's what we do with those challenges that makes the difference how we view them how we perceive them I think Lavina talked about perceptions a little bit last week to add to that it is not only how we see it but how do we feel about it? What am I willing to take on in this situation? Am I willing to take on the, how that other person feels? Am I willing to let something else in the universe upset me and my joy and my peace? Sometimes we might say, yes, we do. We are willing to live in that chaos and that conflict. 
And sometimes we say, no. I stand in my joy as the one presence. I don't give my power to anyone. We have great power in our thoughts and our words. Matter of fact, that's the only power you have. And you, it's that two-edged sword. You have the power to hurt, and you have the power to heal. And we do that with our thoughts and our words. And it's what are we as individuals responsible for and accountable for in those situations? What am I willing to take on for somebody else? If somebody shows up with the challenge, am I willing just to listen and be? And to stay in my own head, in my own space? Or am I willing to join in the conflict? It's a choice, right? You ever thought about it like that? Most of the time, we just engage, right? Somebody challenges us, what are we going to do? We're going to fight back. It's that flight and fight syndrome that is part of humanity. We have to begin to move from the fight and flight, which is in the back of your brain, into the frontal lobe of our brain and consciously view the world and what's our role in it, and how do we want to play in it. Personally, I love to play joyfully and happily and, you know, just be with people and praise and worship and have fun. Um, that's who I am. Those of you that know me very well know that I can be downright silly sometimes. Um, it, because I'm just a big kid. And I really learned early in life not to take things personally because I don't want to take on somebody else's stuff. I got enough stuff of my own that I'm dragging, right? Because anybody in here don't have, um, doesn't have a big bag of stuff? Have you left it somewhere yet? Yeah. So I invite you to put it down. Right? What rocks are you carrying? What thoughts are you carrying that create conflict within you? What did you learn as a child that you're still worrying about today? Are you willing to let it go? Are you willing just to live in peace? It is a conscious choice that you can make. Is it easy? No, not at all. It's not easy because we, are, we constantly have to remember when we go to that place because we're going to go there. We're going we're gonna to be sent directly to that challenge until we prove that it no longer affects us. It's the same thing in the church community. Whatever you resist, persist. Whatever has transformed in this community that has been resisted will continue to show up until it's healed and let go. No different from your life than in this community because this community is family. And family systems play a part in our church. Did you all know that? Your family is right here looking you at the face. Might not be mom that you were born with, might not be dad that you were born with, and it might not be that sister or brother or that aunt, that nosy aunt, you know. Guarantee you that person is right here. And if you haven't healed any of that feelings around that, it's going to show up here until you do. And it's going to continue to play out over and over and over again until each individual heals, and the community heals and moves forward. And the only way you can move forward is to heal. Can't do the vision, can't do the mission, can't do outer work until as one unit we recognize who we are, why we're here, 
and what really matters and what we want in life. And if we're in conflict, that's not going to happen. The physical reality we create from our thoughts. It's not the truth. It's not the truth. The truth is you are a presence of love, of peace, of wisdom, and God. That's all that there is. And when we remember to stay in that space, we move forward in harmony. There's a quote by Charles Fillmore. Wise men ever seek the Christ. When we apply to ourselves... This means that when our God, given wisdom, is spiritually illuminated, we seek the Christ, not in some far-off place, but at the center of our being. The star, our spiritual illumination, leads us to the realization of the Christ in you and the hope and glory. The wise men of this Christmas story are leading us to that truth, to that center of our being, which is peace, which is harmony, which is love. That's the core of who we are. Always. Never changes. We just have to remember. Remember who, who we really are and why we're here. We have to balance the inner with the outer. Because there's a lot of conflict out in the world. Have y'all noticed that? Wow. How do you let it affect you? How do you let it play out in your life? Because it does affect us. Do we run from the TV news? Do we try to ignore it? And I say try. Yeah. Or do we really listen and take it to prayer and send peaceful thoughts through the world? Send loving thoughts to all. Do we take it into our lives with our family and create a sacred space? Even in the conflict, because there's always conflict in family. And we have to learn the ebb and flow of who each individual is and how we can interact, be accountable, right? Because we have to be accountable for ourselves and not take on somebody else's stuff. They get their own journey. We can't tell them what to do or how to do it. That's not ours. We are only responsible or ourselves. And that's hard when you're in relationships with other people. It's really difficult because especially if you're a mama or a daddy, um, we want to tell our children, you need to do this, you've got to do that, da 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 mm, Yeah. How's that working for you? Doesn't always work. They got their own path. They got their own spirit. They get to decide for themselves consciously and sometimes unconsciously what is theirs to do? And we have to be okay with that. And we have to let people fail. We can't be the Savior because there is no Savior. Mm. Think about that one. The only person that you can save is yourself. And that's only through your own actions and thinking. There is no Savior. There's nobody going to come in and make it all perfect and right, except for you. The only way you're going to be able to do it is to dig down deep within you and find that place, that harmony, that balance of the feminine and masculine energy that is alive in each of you.
and bring it in and send it out as love. We all have the ability to, to appropriate all the all are part of what Jesus expressed in life. All of us have that same ability to be the love, to be the peace. From the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, Jesus so unified himself in thought, word, and deed with this inner Christ, logos, or word, creative principle of God in which all the ideas in divine mind, which are life, substance, intellect, intelligence, wisdom, love, strength, power, that even his seemingly mortal of flesh body took on the divine nature and became immortal, was wholly transformed into God-likeness spiritually, thus throughout his entire being, Jesus showed forth the glory and perfection of God father the mother the one all of us have those same capabilities if we choose to use them and to do the work take the actions to be immersed in daily prayer to consciously stop and think before we speak to watch that double sword and to create the life that we want to live each and every day as love. The question I'm going to leave you with today, where are you in your journey? And where do you wish to reside as the presence of fear or of peace? And how are you going to go within, find your way, let go of others' thoughts and impressions, and see other people as the Christ child, just as you are the Christ child. Forgive your own injustices as well as those of your brothers and sisters. Each of us are on an individual journey. And we come together. We come together as a family to help each other. That's why we're here. We can all be spiritually fed on our own. We create community to help each other, to be with like-minded people and to be the peace and love of God. That's what community is, peace and love. It gives us an opportunity to be joyful with people who mean something to us. I love you. I bless you. I behold the living Christ as each of you. And so it is. Amen. Amen.